Welcome to MyPersonalFootballCoach.com's Soccer Player Development Podcast. Discover all the secrets, hints and tips about soccer player development and soccer coaching from some of the leading figures in world soccer. Here's your host, Saul Isaacson Hurst. What's happening, guys? Welcome back to another show. And this week, we've got another top guest for you. It's Colin Bergmans. Colin is a skills coach at PSV Academy. PSV, obviously, one of the big clubs in Holland. And uh, lucky enough to go out there a few weeks ago and film another Inside the Academy shoot. Uh, really, really um, an extraordinary few days there, really. Really looking forward to sharing that with you guys. It'll be live on the Inside the Academy channel, YouTube channel, probably in January uh blackburn one coming up this month very soon but yeah colin's top top practitioner top coach really interesting to learn about his skills box idea and uh yeah just uh like i say real interesting deep dive into what they do there real individualized based program at ps3 real technical focus got some great technical program there were some great technical players coming through so i know you're going to enjoy it and uh yeah i had a lot of feedback and a lot of um, questions about my new coach mentorship program like i say, i'm going to put the link in the description you can find out more there on the page about uh basically each month we'll take an hour's deep dive into your coaching methodology your coaching how uh, your sessions or your coaching career or your coaching business whatever you want to work on if you want to work at the highest level or you just want to take you know just to maximize what you're doing uh check out more info on my bio but really look forward to supporting a small group of coaches around the world into taking their their football game their football career or the football business to the next level but uh without further ado let's get into the show so colin bergman's welcome to the show thank you thank you good to see you again very good to see you again my friend uh can you give us a brief outline of your playing and coaching journey up to this point course uh i started my youth uh <clears throat> an academy of Eindhoven. so i played there for one year after that uh, i went to belgium so i live like quite close to the border so i played there for four years and after that uh, my coaching journey, journey started so i did some internships for my for my school for the sports university uh, at tilburg so i started helmut sport FC Eindhoven, where i played as well and then i uh, i yeah i i uh, the, well can we do it again my bad. Yes, yeah, start. Okay, so yes, of course, start again. So yes, yeah, so Colin, welcome to the sh- Colin Bergman's. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to see you again. So let's just give us a brief. Uh, you can see my friend. Brief outline of your playing and coaching journey up to this point, please. Of course, uh, I started my journey as a player. So before uh, my coaching career started, I went uh, to Ashanto to become an uh, academy player over there. After that, I played four years at Lommel, so I lived quite close to the border. So I went to Belgium. And after that, my coaching journey started with some internships. And after that, I became the coordinator of the PSV Soccer School. And now for already seven years at the club as a skills coach, um, as you might know, and as a head coach of the under 13s and 14s. So you've been to, you've been at PSV for seven years now, yeah? Yeah, that's right. So what I just told you, I started as a coordinator of the soccer school. So give some some yeah. clinics, some clinics, some sessions. And after that, I went head coach. So. So tell us about then your role. So you're like your 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 role is like um, you know te- technical coach, isn't it? And then obviously your head coach team as well. Tell us about that. Then you, I mean, obviously I've seen you coach. You're very technical based. I've seen the sort of stuff you do there. Um, how do you think? What sort of how did how did did your did your experiences as your as a young player or as a young fan of football affect your the sort of coach you are? A few coaches inspire me. Where in my time as a player. So I try to inspire the kids as well now. So always I love the, the tech, like the technical style of play uh, with many coaches I had uh, when I was a player as well. But now I just want to inspire all the kids with, with the technical sc- stuff I do now. So I think uh, like coaches as Pepine Lions who was also in the PSV Academy and more even more coaches as well, always inspired me uh, with some clips on YouTube, stuff like that. So I'm trying to inspire the youth as well now in my, uh, in my role as a skills coach at the Academy. So, yeah. Tell us a bit about then your your um, your role day to day at the club. So t- give us like t- t- some of the things that you you have to do as your role there in the club. I'm responsible for the video work from the foundation phase. So the clips uh, we are making. Also, what I just told you now uh, this, this afternoon. So every single Saturday, I send the kids clips um, and things what they can improve and things they want to improve, uh, like challenges stuff like that. Uh, but also like the the real like the basic stuff like passing, first touches, um, dribbling stuff, stuff like that, ball mastery. So to, to help them um, outside of the big program, what we already have in the academy, um, I'm trying to, yeah, what I just told you, trying to inspire the kids with the, with the technical skills and their outstanding abilities, but also with the weaknesses, like the, the focus points for them. 
I just want to help them with the technical part of the game and trying to let them know what you need to have uh, later on when you play, hopefully in the first team of the of the of PSV. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll come back to that because obviously you've got the skills box there, which is really impressive. We'll kind of come back to that. Let's just talk about your early career then. You said you, what was your first role at the club at PSV? I started as a coordinator of the of the PSV soccer school. So that was so, just... So when, you, so when you say soccer school, what is that PSV? What is a soccer school? That's uh, that's uh, for everyone who just wants to uh, okay. train like a PSV player. So yeah. kids can, uh, can sign in for some clinics, for some sessions at PSV to, learn, yeah. to uh, let them learn how to, how to train as a PSV player. And after that, um, of course, I wanted to be an academy, like a real academy with a real PSV player. So, and there, like my my career as a, as an academy coach started. So, uh, from that point, um, I was always busy with the, like the technical part, with the foundation phase, with the tens, eleven, twelves, and now later on also with the seventeens, eighteens. So that's so that's so, 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 so when so when did you start in the academy? Um, you mean what year or? Yeah, how long did you spend in the soccer school until you then transferred into working within the academy? Only for two years, like the soccer school in combination with the foundation phase already. So it was, I was uh, coordinating the soccer school, but also assistant of the under-10s. And then I became the under-10s head coach further on the 11s, 12s, 13s, and now 14s. Okay, so then talk about your first role as the under-10s. What was the first things the first things you um, you noticed becoming an academy coach with the under-10s at PSV? Well, good question. Like the kids saw so pure like they they want to know everything about what, what they want to improve what they what they can learn with the ball so if you like what i just told you if you want to inspire kids i think you have to be inspiration for the kids as well so what can they do with the ball when what situations do they need to turn what situations do they need to drop stuff like that so let them expire let them explore what it is to be an academy player as well but for me as a coach it was just well like a top top uh, academy of PSV with so many top and good players but if you can still help them with their opportunity to hopefully uh, go to the first team so that was for me like my first coaching uh, ideas and that was just amazing that's about then what was uh, the, the first what were the sessions like then what sort of what was a typical under 10 session look like at the time um just skills so 1v1 2v1s 3v2 stuff like that so and they're in overload games even numbers so 1v1s uh, and just trying to let them explore what you can do in every single situation based on many parts on the pitch so definitely uh, outplaying, definitely uh, 1v1s, defending, attacking. So just let them explore what you can do in every single situation. Just, just trying to fill the backpack with so many technical stuff. And after, at the end of the day, hopefully they can just pick like a book from the library. So what can they use in the games? And, and that's what fits with me as a player. So is it the same now then with the foundation phase at PSV? Is it similar? And is it pretty, it's pretty, pretty still the same methodology throughout? Uh, I think we changed a bit. So a few years ago, I think in my eyes, we had many, many passes, but I think we have so more players who are individually so good. But I think at the moment we have like real defenders, real midfielders, real attacking players um, instead of only dribbles. So I think we are filling the backpacks now from all the kids. But I think when we are looking to the profiles now, we've got so many different instead of only like uh, dribblers at the, at the, in the academy here. Yeah. So that's interesting. So you say maybe previously the academy was were producing much more sort of one v one out playing dip dribbling players. Now you have more of a balance or different sorts of players. So how did you address that? How did you come? You, you saying that was the you in that's a recruitment thing? Was it part of the coach methodology where you started changing or combination? I think a combination of, of both. Like uh, we were talking about, what players do we want to uh, do we want to have in our academy? And I think when you produce like many, many different players with many outstanding abilities. So I think with an outstanding ability, you can reach the first team instead of only making like the basics with the kids. So I think uh, we're producing like many, many more creative players with their own outstanding ability instead of only uh, like the dribblers like we had before in my eyes. So I think we made a, we made a big step definitely with our recruitment. So that's, that's, uh, that's just how does, that, how does that reflect then in your program? Obviously, you said you're, you're still doing lots of you know skills and outplaying and overload games, underload games. How do you change that? How do you you know tweak that so then you 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 support in all the sorts of different types of players in there? I think um, like the main goal for us is trying to um, trying to develop the outstanding, ab the outstanding ability from the kids. So let's say. If I'm a dribble like a 1v1, I must be world, world, world and tough class in my, in my 1v1. But I have to learn also my focus points. So 
we're just trying to fill the backpack with all the stuff, with all the all the basics, all the technical skills you need. Um, so then you have like a big base with all the skills, am I as you need as like to outplay opponents with passing dribbling, stuff like that. But definitely like, like the outstanding ability. So what's outstanding for me as a player must be top in a few years uh, and later on as well. So I think it's a combination of still looking at my outstanding abilities in combination with just making them overall like technically better. And what I mean, for example, then you talked about, you know, sort of defenders and stuff like that. Does that affect your planning that or is uh, all the under 10s basically doing the same drill? So, you know, I've seen some of your practices where, you know, transition games, overloads, underloads, that sort of thing. Are, is, are all players doing the same drill? Are you thinking, right, okay, maybe he's best suited to doing that specific thing? Or is it, I'm just wondering, you know, as, as young players, are they just much more of a general, like, you know, uh, you know, rounded process or are you much specific or does that happen a bit later on? A little, uh, a little bit later on, like the the tens, eleven, and twelves are doing like a circuit on the Monday and yeah. on, the, on the Thursday. So uh, many sessions with all the all the things you need later on. So that's that's quite um, like the basic stuff. But then uh, just just more to explore what you can do. Uh, what do I need? Uh, just trying to uh, develop every single part of the foot, every single part of the body, just to help me explore what we can do with all the skills. And later on with the thirteens, with the fourteens, and even later on with the fifteen, sixteens, we got two uh, individual sessions a week so then you uh, train once or twice a week uh, just the things you want to develop like my main focus or and my, my main thing what needs to be my next step uh, in my football career just like for for attackers it could be uh, once a week 1v1 once a week um, just like uh, shooting practice and stuff like that so then we focus on position wise and then we focus on uh, the things you really need uh, because hopefully later on like the backpack is already a little bit more filled with all the skills you needed in the foundation phase so now we can put our main focus a little bit more on like their uh individual plans and to get an idea then i mean so what what's the youngest age group you have there psv under 10s now but we also already, uh, already have some like uh under eight players as well like uh i'm an, i mean uh age roles age results and uh, nine year old players yeah but we normally start with under 10s yeah so that's a tens. I mean, yeah, we spoke about this the other day, wasn't it? I mean, because obviously traditionally teams did have younger age groups, right? Under nines and stuff like that. Why is why has that gone away from that in Holland specifically? That's uh, that's a good question. I think um, all the clubs are one of the best players, of course. So that's I think the reason they are starting like even more, even earlier as a few years before. But I think what we're doing now, we have like a so, sort of pre academy, so already like players from under eight, under nines who are training on the Sunday mornings to have an idea so what, what players we might uh, want to have in the, in, the, in the academy from the under 10s in the foundation phase. But so has PSV never had an under nines team or an under eights team officially? I mean, the leagues did not have, and that, was, that, was that change recently? I mean, I'm sure I remember in Ajax and seeing the under nines play, for example, we played the under nines as an Ajax team, yeah. Yeah, we had, we had some under nines uh, playing on our under tens, so that's the reason why we used to have some some tournaments with under nines as well. But I normally right. played in under tens. Yeah. So give us an idea about your under tens and give us what's a typical week for an under ten at PSV. Uh, the training four times in a week, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and normally should be uh, two and a half hours. But we have like uh, many sessions where we can do just everything in the two and a half hours. So it could be uh, futsal, could be many one v ones, could be outdoor, could be uh, street football, so stuff like that. So we can just fill the two and a half hours every single day with everything we want. So it could be for the um, for the mentor, like to talk with the kids, could be with the uh, individual coaches to have some individual stuff. Could be with with a full group, like as a as a as a group session. So in the two and a half hours, so we can do just whatever we think what's the best for the kid during a week, during uh, what we think what fits in the program program of the periodization. So. Just two and a half, just two and a half hours with everything we want to do. Well, because uh, I mean, two and a half hours is quite a long session, isn't it? I mean, compared to what we traditionally do in England, to so get ten hours a week, that's quite that's a lot of contact time. And how does that work? They're all coming in after school, are they? Are this all in the evenings, or is it a bit of hybrid? Or how does that work? Um, we work with centres, so we're trying to uh, let it to let the kids train as close as they can at home. So we have uh, in the foundation phase, we use uh, four centres, so the kids can. Hopefully, only drive, uh, of only have to drive like 30 minutes max to go to the centre. Yeah. So that's the reason why we train uh, four times, and we can tra train to four times in a week. Every single Wednesday, all the kids are together at the at the Hetang at our facility, so they see each other once uh, a week. 
so that's in my eyes quite interesting but what we see now so after the two and a half hours the kids still want to improve the kids still want to train they're still hungry for the next session so if we if we see that and I, if i see that as a coach i'm so happy to see the kids still want to improve so that's the reason why we do the homework as well so the kids want to improve so why shouldn't we give them more tools to uh, to inspire them to develop them to make them even better every single day because they want to play football they're hungry they want to be the best so why shouldn't we give them even more but yes obviously then because we talked about this when i was there so there's you have like regional development centers so obviously like the, car, the children are doing too much traveling two and a half hours and then they'll come together once a week so then what age does it change what age do they come in then and then they all they're training at the the, the academy every day rather than their regional centers from the 13 so when they go to the high school they, they're coming uh, to the head gang every single day we have two schools uh, who are close to eindhoven let's say 15 minutes away from from our, uh, our facility so uh, when they are in the 13th they are uh, like real in a real academy if you can say that yeah. and they train every day at 13th no they also four times a week but then we train okay. uh, two two times in the morning so the tuesdays and the thursday for the individual yeah. session so then we have many many coaches from the foundation phase uh, as well because they don't train at the evening then uh, they only have to train in the evening then so they can help us uh, with many coaches in the morning and on Mondays and Fridays, we train in the afternoon. Um, so then we train two o'clock. Interesting. So give us an idea then of like a typical session. I mean, you talked about two and a half hour session and that may be lots of variation, you, you know, lots of different things. But, you know, give us a typical session, what the boys might go through in two and a half hours. So normally we start with a video homework. So uh, what I just told you, every single Saturday we send them up, we send them clips. And that's the thing where we start off. Let's say when we have a typical Monday, we start with a video homework, let's say for 15 or 20 minutes. After that, we trying to build up uh, the session from under an overload games to even number. So let's say after the video, we could play many 2v1s, 3v2, stuff like that, in combination with maybe a position game because we have quite much players. We've got many, many players. So sometimes we divide a group with the passes or dribblers or we're trying to have um, both exercises. So let's say a position game and um, a 2v1, 3v2 or under an overload games. After that, we're trying to have many, many even number, so let's say 1v1, 2v2, 3v2, 3v3. Sometimes we do a little bit individual after that, or we play in games, and it's always based on the periodization. So it could be with small numbers as well, it could be uh, with even numbers or with an overload as well in, uh, in matches, but definitely with uh, the spaces we want to let them improve. So it could be a 3v3, 3v3 on, a, on, a, yeah, on a pitch where everyone thinks it's way too big, but for us it's really important to let the kids explore what you can do in uh, big distances or like just small side games and stuff like that. So let them explore what you can do in maybe crazy, crazy distances. But I think it's good for the kids to explore what you can do or what you might do. And Tessa, you mean you mentioned there you got you dribble, you got some dribblers and some passers. I mean, so how do you um, you know support those and how do you identify? You know, that's quite interesting because a lot of typically in England, you know, some academies like like dribblers, some like passers. You know, that sort of thing. How do you make sure you're 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 suiting everybody's needs and everybody's strengths? And definitely with the Thursdays and the Tuesdays, so then it's already an individual session. So when the when you uh, yeah, when you want to have like happy kids and when the kids uh, if you want to give the kids the feeling that we are helping them with the plan, so that's the reason why we have the Tuesdays and the Thursdays. But that's only definitely on the Monday and on the Fridays we want them we want to, we want them to be in a situation that they can be themselves. So let's say when we have a passer and we play a two v two, two v. I'm sorry. Let's if we play like a two v one, he's always maybe the the one who wants to pass, but definitely we want him to dribble as well. So that's the reason why we're trying to bring him in one v one, two v twos as well. So then he needs to dribble. Then he needs to uh, explore how it is to dribble instead of passing. So we're trying to bring the all the kids in the situations they might not like or. In situation that they really like so that's the reason why we do that so i think it's quite interesting to let kids explore what they love but also where's the struggle challenge them you're saying right yeah tell us about tell us about a tuesday and thursday session and main, the individual session how is that different to the monday and the thir friday one we start always with a with a motor skills so then we all that's then it's already based on um on the growth and stuff like that so then, it's, then we're already making sessions with uh, with strength, with um, with a strength program, with a extra homework program for uh, motor skills as well. 
Then we go outside, and we have many. What I just told you, many many coaches who are trying to help the kids with the uh, with the skills they want to improve. So then it's just forty five minutes with um, attacking with one v ones, with uh, receiving high balls, with passing first touches, just everything what the kids want to improve. So let's say we have eight or nine groups with small groups uh, of let's say three, four, five, six players, and then they can improve the things they want. And then I mean that's interesting, isn't it? So I mean that's because you, you, how does that change as you move up the academy? I mean, talks like the tens and the thirteens and the sixteens. I mean, how much change is there from individual development to sort of team development? Um, in our academy, it's really important that we are always aware of the individual player. So I think, of course, you play football as let's say five v five, six v six, eight v eight, eleven v eleven. Of course, it's a thing. It's a thing like it's just what would you where you're working together to make. Um, to win or to develop or how do you want to say but I think it's always important that we are looking for the individual player because an individual is going to reach hopefully the first team one day so I think it always stays the same in our academy every single time the individual player is the, the most important one in the group and we have a plan for everyone but of course you play 11 v 11 with a group so I think it's still individual from the 16s, 17s, 18s but a little bit more team wise of course because we don't have uh, many individual sessions as well then. And it's only once a week or, so, or something like that. So from the foundation phases, many individual sessions, but definitely like the, the basics. The 13s, 14s is um, individual base. 15s, 16s is individual base, but a little bit more team-wise. And, and the 17s, 18s also, sometimes the individual session, but a little bit more with the team. Yeah. I mean, as, an in, as a technical coach, individual technical coach, what, what do you think the technical assets are of a player that needs to get to the first team, you know, thinking PSV now, you know, Champions League club, what are the technical, what technical assets players need, you know, to, to, to get that, make that journey complete? Um, be the best in your outstanding ability. So let's say when I'm a, I'm a, I'm a passer, I have to be the best one. When I'm a dribbler, I have to be the best one. So let, let's say uh, we have so many good players in our first team now. So, when we, when I look to the outstanding abilities of their, of the players of the first team now, they are in my eyes outstanding. So that, that's the reason why we play Champions League as well, of course. But I think as an academy player, you have to be the best in your outstanding ability because when you're so maybe like a basic player, like let's say we fill the backpack, everything is just like a six or a seven, but not like a ten. Then you're just like a normal, like a decent player. But we want to have a, like the top class player. So that's the reason why I just told you we want to. Like the outstanding ability of the player must be top, top, must be world class, otherwise you won't fit in the first team. And that's the reason why you're going to reach the first team, yes or no. So we don't want um, all the skills like a six or a seven, but we just want everything like a seven or eight, but like my outstanding ability has to be a nine or a ten, otherwise it won't be good enough. Let's give some ideas then. I mean, if you're a passer, what are the sort of things, your skills, you know, those outstanding abilities you need to play in the first team? Uh, we're working with situations. So I think uh, you have to... You must be able to be someone in front when you have someone in your back, when you have someone on your side, like the 360 degrees turning, stuff like that. So I think like the basic skills for, let's say, for a center midfielder could be like a passing first touches, but then not, not, not just like the basic, but I think you have to fit in. Um, what can I say? Um, you just need all the skills for a midfielder to be world-class. So let's say when you are looking to Modric or to Coast, they are so good with, all the parts of the feet, all the parts of the body, all the parts of turning. Uh, Thiago, when, you, when he has someone in his, uh, in his back, that's normal for him. So I think we must let the kids explore what you need in today's football. So it doesn't matter anymore after a few years uh, who's going to press you, where he's going to press you, uh, what type of players are going to press me, um, what part of food I need. So I, like everything must be so good with all the, uh, all the parts of the body, all the parts of the feet. But they don't feel the press anymore. It's like when you see clips of Busquets of Thiago, they know how to deal the press. And that's the thing what we want in our first team as well. So that's the reason why we're trying to create the situation on the pitch and with the boxes, what we use. Then tell us a bit about the situations on the pitch and the boxes. Uh, what, what you see now in today's football in our eyes in academy, like everything is based on a box from 25 to 25 meters. So let's say everything is so clo uh, every everything is so compact because teams are even if they're high pressing, low pressing, mid block pressing, like everything is so compact. So you need skills to to deal with the press, of course, but everything is so co compact now. So you need to be the best in small side games. You need to be the best in small side um, 
small side game, uh, games and, and situations. So that's the reason why we're trying to uh, help them with exploring what can you do when I have someone in my back, when I have someone in front, when I have someone on my side. So what I just told you, hopefully after a few years, it doesn't matter anymore where someone presses me because I know what to do. So then you're obviously talking about 1v1 domination out playing, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's obviously then, so that's key at the heart of the, the methodology of the academy. Yeah, and of course, when I know how to deal the, the 1v1 press, I know to outplay someone as well later on because when I'm behind the press, it's totally different when I'm uh, in front of the press. So just trying to think about all the situations you might need afterwards in 1v1 dominating and outplaying opponents and outplaying with 2v1s, 1v1s, stuff like that. But then tell us a bit about your approach here then to how do you teach that? What's your methodology in terms of, you know, layering that for the players and the different age groups? I mean, and then maybe you can tell us about your skill box that, you know, ties in with that, doesn't it? The skill box is based on uh, the video homework part. So just all the basics of the of the game. And we're trying to use a, a six week periodization. Uh, we're using the steps from the boxes. I'd say we're working with box three, box 10, box nine, when, we, when we're talking about the center of the pitch. So all the skills you need in the center of the pitch um, are different because of the box is going to change every single time um, when you go higher up on the pitch. So let's say when you have someone in your back, uh, like lower on the pitch, is totally different when you have someone in your back, let's say when you're Sadio Mane on the left wing. So uh, we're always trying to let them, exp like, like trying to inspire them and trying to let them explore. So when you have some someone in your back, it's totally different when you're on, when you're, let's say, in box three than in box 11. So what we used to do a few years ago with my eyes when i have someone on my back i pass the ball to you and try to turn that's not the context of the game so like the press maybe should be the same but like the where i want to end up with my dribble with my turn or stuff like that is totally different because the context of the game changed every single time so we're trying to use the box system and all the boxes are trying to uh, let the players inspire and explore what can you do in every single box let's say when i'm tiago silva as a number six uh, not Thiago so when I'm Thiago from Liverpool number six when I'm Sadio Mane um, when I'm let's say uh, Alaba when I'm in as a centre back so every single time we must think about the context of the game and then so what age group does that start I mean is that from the foundation from the various ages when you look at the boxes I mean or is it when you're a bit older or is it a bit more position specific how does that tie in uh, later on it's a little bit more position specific but we want to um the foundation phase kids, for the foundation phase kids, uh, everything is like quite the same. So when we use the box system, um, everything, everyone gets the same program, and everyone uh, we want to have everyone to um, let them explore like the same program. But later on, there's a little bit more position like specific yeah, from let's say the 15, 16s and 16s. So let's talk about that later period, and let's talk about your work with some of the older players. Same then, how does that work, and then what's the difference between that and the younger players' work? It's a little bit more detailed. Like, let's say when I'm working with the striker from the under 18s, it's so more detailed because he already, we, or we as an academy already filled his backpack. So it could be a little bit more, a little bit more with, like, let's say, detailed shooting or like making the, the, the chance even bigger to score goals or making the chance bigger to, uh, to score every single part of the pitch for him. So that's a little bit more specific on position and a bit, little bit more specific on what he wants to improve. Like, for making the next step or making the last step to, let's say, another 21 or to the first team. So instead of like the basic stuff, it's a little bit more detail about what he wants to improve and what could be the next step for him in turning, shooting, 1v1, stuff like that. I mean, and what well, has your role different? I mean, how do you sort of identify which players you're going to support with the older ones all the way through? I mean, how does that work in terms of your role? That's something that's, that's always a need from a player. So let's say the under 18s coach is always uh, in contact with me. So if he want, if players from him, um, ask him to work with me. It could be an option for me. If players from him ask me to help them, of course, I always want to help them. It's always based on the, thing they, on the things they want. So I, I'm not going to ask the kids, oh, please uh, come to me because the, it's the plan from the kids. So, of course, um, I could help a centre-back as well. I could help a midfielder or an attacker as well. So it was always based on the plan from the kids in combination with the coaches. And if they want to improve their skills with me, I want to help you every single day. I want to put all my effort in you. So that's something from the kids. So, so, the, so the players will ask, say, look, I need support in this area. And then they'll come and ask you, what about the coaches? The coach say, or do you, I mean, if you're watching a game, say, look, for example, that, 
you know, number three has difficulty, you know, under pressure or something. When is that? When's the intervention come? Um, good question. Normally after after matches, like uh, we struggle with this or he wants to improve that or stuff like that. And always uh, I try to stay in contact with all the coaches as well. So let's, let's say if I see a center back struggling with the, with the first touch or with the passing skills, I can go to a coach and of course say I want to help in or, or I see he can improve in that. And there's always contact with me, with a coach and with a player as well. So it's like a triangle. And it's something we talk about like every single day because what I just told you, all the individuals are the main focus in the academy and we want to individuals in, in our first team. So that's the reason why we're trying to let them unique on, on their own way, but of course, like the best version of yourself. And tell us about like the, the playing philosophy, for example, the academy. What do you have, like a set formation? <laughs> how, how are you getting the boys to set up? Um, no, because we're always looking looking to the spaces what, what they need and we're always looking to the spaces uh, where they can improve. So we, we don't we don't uh, talk about formations. We talk about um, spaces where they can use in the games. So no. <laughs> sorry, wait a minute. That's some water napkin. So no, we uh, <clears throat> we don't talk about formation. We talk about space what we can use in games. So we don't say we have to play one four two three or we have to play one uh, five three two or stuff like that. But we're always trying to let the players recognize in what space we can we use the skills and what spaces can we come to um, outplay the outplay the opponents in two v ones or stuff like that on on the pitch. So it's always based on the on the opponent as well because they of course they have a pro they have a plan they have a plan how they want to play against us and that's the reason why we have to look uh, for spaces on the pitch yeah what about with the youngest age groups like in tens and elevens uh we're using we're also using a game plan for so it's a structure for the coach to help the players with uh, the skills they might need in the games so we have a like a structure plan for the coaches but the kids don't know about it so we want to let them bring in the situations that we as coaches know um to help the kids later on in games. So it's not like we're going to play uh, 2 2 1 or 2 1 2 or stuff like that. We're always trying to let the kids explore. We always want the kids to recognize themselves and what spaces then they can, uh, what spaces can they play or what spaces they can outplay their opponents. Interesting. So in terms of your skill box, and obviously we talked about it briefly, I mean, so then it's just like an online resource based it's a homework program. You have all the detail on it. How do the kids access it? Um, we're always using a WhatsApp group with the, with the kids. So in the Netherlands, we can use the WhatsApp groups to send the, the, the parents of the kids as well, like the clips. But every single Saturday, we send them clips with their homework and we use the Instagram page from the, from the foundation phase to, um, to tag us and to, um, to send the clips as well. It's, it's never a must, it's never a need, but the kids can show the, show their skills to the coaches and show their skills to the, to the teammates on the Instagram page. So, they might send it to the coaches to ask for tips, to ask for tricks, to ask for, to ask for things they can improve. Maybe it's never a must, but for us, it's it's like a good insight of uh, like the, the home situation of the kids, what they what they what they doing with their homework, uh, how they improve. Uh, if he's making clips of this of himself, or the parents are using the using the phone to help them. So for us, it's also good to to see the environment of the kid as well. But what sort of stuff would be in the homework, for example? Uh, just everything you can think about, like uh, it's always based on the, on the periodization. So let's say when we're around box two, box three, we want to build up. Of course, you need many passes. Uh, and when we play through the press, we we'll maybe need need a pass with the laces, or we need an inside pass with the left or right foot. If we want to play around, we need maybe uh, the outside of the foot, so stuff like that. So it's always based on the periodization. Uh, when we're a little bit more higher up on the pitch, it could be one to one dom dominating. Um, it could be on the, on the last phase bicycle kicks. Uh, it could be in the last uh, on the building up phase when we lose the ball, maybe a sliding tackle. So just all the skills you can think about, and hopefully at the end of the day we are trying to fill the backpack with all the skills you need. So in our facilities at the Air Fund, so we can do so many stuff because what we we're just talking about, we have so many hours. So why shouldn't we do the most extreme things with the kids, like sliding tackles, bicycle kicks, header, stuff like that? So we just want to fill the full full backpack instead of only like the like the basic skills so for example you saw it how long would you you spend your periodization how long do you spend on box three is it one box at a time or two boxes or how long are you spending on each box uh normally one week so let's say when we want to play in the center of the pitch we spend one week on on that topic of so course got, we always 
So you've got your number three, you know, your, your left back, if you like. So it's your left back zone. One week of that, so he's up receiving and trying to play forward and maybe break lines, you know, that sort of thing. So all the skills, all the football actions, maybe you could call them, needed for a number three, they'd be within the homework, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. And of course, like, even if you're, uh, even if you're an attacker, definitely when you're like, let's say, on a 9, 10, 11, it's good to explore, like, all the skills, even as a, as a centre back. And if you maybe later on, you're never going to play as a centre back, but you need the skills later on, maybe as a striker as well, to pass through the press or stuff like that. So that's yeah, a really interesting. Lot. And so you mentioned overhead kicks. How they practice in there? Just that so you just get them at home, just doing overhead kicks <laughs> on the sofa, on the sofa, or in the garden, or how's like, the health like, and safety uh, policy? <laughs> like kids now, kids nowadays are so creative. So um, we try to give the give an example. So I do it. I did it on. Like on the futsal court, so it's like a soft floor, so I can do like the, the bicycle case myself. But the kids are so creative, so they're trying to do their own way of how they want to improve their skills uh, with the bicycle kick. So we got so many, many like let's say crazy videos with with uh, parents even standing on uh, on a porch or standing on like um, I don't know how to say like on, on a house with throwing balls or uh, to a, to a kid for the first touch. So. Even the parents are trying to help the kids as well on the most, on, on uh, like the most craziest way. So that that's so amazing to see. So definitely, when you when you can help kids with their own work, when you can help them with with like uh, developing their, their own skills uh, in combination with the parents, in combination with home, in combination with only me and a ball instead of only uh, like the kids. The kids love to improve, but of course, the kids are trying to play with their friends as well. But if they have some time for themselves, they want to improve as well. So why shouldn't we give them the homework? Why shouldn't we give them like the most crazy examples to, to to teach to develop to uh, to be hungry for the next session to be more skillful uh, like on the next day so for me that's, that's something I, I really love and how do you how do you differentiate yourself how do you what's different about you and the other academies obviously you're, you know Ajax is not too far you got Alkmaar now another big academy doing really well Feyenoord you're pulling relative, Holland's relatively small country how do you convince players to parents say, look, come to PSV instead of the other teams? What's the difference between you guys? That, that's a good question. Uh, of course, I don't have like bad words for, for different or for other clubs because I think we, we're doing uh, like a good job for all the kids in the Netherlands at the moment. But I think when, we, when we're looking at, when, I, when I'm looking at PSV, like, I think we're in unique in uh, player development, definitely individual player development because all the kids haven't owned it. Like an IDP, you call it an IDP in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, we call it like an individual plan. Uh, we we're always looking to the skills from an individual player. So uh, definitely on the foundation phase, we don't look much to like the tactics or stuff like that. So I think when we're talking about like the unique style of playing in our PSV academy, that's definitely like our our zoom in on like the individual part of the game, individual skills and individual needs from a player instead of only. Um, like team based stuff, and I think that's that's a difference because uh, in our academy and different like and like the other academies. Tell us about your individual action plans. How does that work? Um, we are always looking to the outstanding ability and the focus point. So first of all, in our foundation phase, we're trying to let the kids uh, let the kids um, see. So what do you think you're outstanding in? Uh, so what do you think your focus points are? So we want to. Um, let them let them make their own plan. So then it's your plan instead of the coach's plan. So uh, first of all, they're going to fill it fill it in themselves. They got like uh, a small book. They can take it to home, and they can fill in the fill in like it's like a database for the kids. It's like a, a book with outstanding abilities, with the focus points, where they can reflect, where they can put in everything they want in the book. So uh, they, at the end of the day, they are trying to think about their own development, their own development instead of only to teammates or to like to to other people and how how often do you change do you update those plans um good question like we are so many hours with the kids so you're talking about the plans like every single day like it's not always oh we're going to sit let's let's talk about the plan but sometimes you're on the pitch and he's he shows you something what's in the plan so that's when you talk about relationships with the kids so if i know the plan from a kid i can help him like even more instead of only like the, doing the, the team stuff so I think it's a combination of um, having a sit with a kid, having a chat with the parents, having um, having a chat with a kid on the pitch, having um, more details about him and more details about what he wants to improve. So I think definitely when you have a, uh, like a, let's say a relationship with a kid and knows about when you know about his plan and his needs and his uh, things he wants to improve, I think that's 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 a big step for us. Uh, what we made like the last year as coaches. 
Interesting. And what about yourself? How do you keep on top of the game and make sure that you're developing yourself as a technical coach? Um, with your visit, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, what what, what, are, what, are, what are we all using uh, with, with the players and what, are, what we just already talked about and talked about a few weeks ago, we're trying to use benchmark for the kids as well, but also for myself. So we're using benchmark for the kids. So uh, like idols for them, like let's say Messi, Ronaldo, uh, what they can use with clips, with stuff like that to, to improve. And the same is for us as coaches. Uh, two years ago, uh, me, like myself and Joop, our coordinator, uh, visited the Pepine Linos at Liverpool. It's like, uh, he could be a mentor for me. So like, we're using like the mentorship for the, for the kids, but also for the players. So uh, people who can inspire you, uh, people who can uh, motivate you, people who can um, be the next step for you. So I think that's something I use um, as well. So of course, we had, we had some good talks at, at the Atlantic as well. So we're trying to use mentorships for the coaches as well to, to inspire, to explore what could be the next step for you. And that's something like what really drives me and what really fits into my plan as well. So trying to talk as many as I can with people who inspire me. And what about what's, what would your, your own future ambitions in the game be like? Would you like to work at first team level and or something like that, you know, with, ad, with adult players? Like, I really love the thing what I'm doing now. So I'm capable, like, I'm able to work with, with all academy players. So, like, uh, there's so much difference between coaching a foundation phase and the under, under-18 players. But I'm in the moment now and in the... Possibi- uh, like I have the possibility now to work with all the academy players, so that's something I really love at the moment. Now uh, I worked for many many years in the like only in the foundation phase, but now I'm, I'm also working with the 15, 16, 17, 18. So of course I would I would love to work in the first team as well, but I think my steps are now first team. I don't know, but maybe maybe in the future. But I think I'm on the on the right spot now. Uh, PSV is a, is a great, great club. So I think uh, from the fa- financial phase up to the, let's say, on the 21st first team, hopefully one day, yeah, for sure. What would, what would your advice be to like a parent of a young player, you know, maybe not in Holland, another round of the world? What should be the things they're concentrating on in their development? Uh, definitely in let, a, let, a click, let their own kid explore uh, everything about the game and don't talk about winning, don't talk about losing, don't talk about that was really good, that was so bad or stuff like that, just to let the kids be happy, let the kids play the game and let the kids be a kid instead of only thinking about like in 10 years because the kids have a, a like the, the road to a first team football player is so, so long. So my, of course you need like 10, 12 years to become a pro player maybe uh, when you're in the PSV Academy, let's say when you start in an under 10. So I think for, for parents, my advice should be let them be their own, let them be their own version of themselves, let them explore how they are as a kid, let them explore how to win games, how to lose games, how to how to deal with all the pressure you're going to have in, in, a, in a top class academy. Yeah. And what about for like a young coach who aspires to have a you know, career in the game like yourself? Uh, find something what, what fits into your own plan. Like, of course, what we're using as players, I think you can use as a coach as well. So find something where you're very like outstanding in and be the best in that. So let's say if you're a skills coach, try to be the best in that as well. Trying to fill your backpack as well with all the skills and with all the details, with everything you need as a coach as well. But trying to, of course, try to be yourself, but also try to be the best in the, in the thing you think you can be the best at. So that makes your understanding, that makes, that makes your plan and your, I think your ideas about the game even stronger. Colin, thank you very much, mate. It's been fantastic. Appreciate it.